All right. So first and foremost, for people who are just logged in with their initial or first name, um, I would recommend that you, uh, you know, log in with your full name, right? So that you know it's, it's it makes sense for us here, right? Um, Um, I've got A N Anil, right? Um, Shaker K and Srinivas K as well. And I'll give, give the team some time to resolve that. Um, and then Srinivas K, it looks like you have got an audio problem. So Amol, you, or Sumit as well. Amol, you need to kind of help them resolve some of these. Yeah, sure. All right, um, <clears throat> let's get started. Um, welcome, everyone. So the first session we typically devoted to introduction and orientation, right? So, you know, we're going to spend maybe two and a half hours or so today uh, going through the introduction and the orientation. Um, and then, you know, we will, in earnest, uh, get started next week onwards. Um, so... All of you are here for the SAP NetWeaver Systems Administration, um, or in general called BASIS and training. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with some background about coach, some background about myself as an instructor. Um, <clears throat> what is SAP? Uh, you know, obviously, a lot of you might have already invested time in it. Others might be relatively new to it. Uh, the course content, the syllabus which we are going to follow, is going to be discussed next. We're going to talk about the training material which we are going to use, our training approach, methodology, why basis, right? I hope you have asked yourself that question in the past. We're going to go through some aspects of SAP GUI installation and connectivity to our SAP systems um, because that's very key since it's a server-based architecture. Um, we're going to go to SAP technical architecture. Um, so we're going to get, kind of get our hands dirty and talk about SAP technical architecture and some key SAP transactions. Then frequently asked questions, uh, which, you know, uh, others have asked in the past. And then I'm going to open the floor for any question and answers um, you know, this team might have. So typically, you know, it's a global presence, right? So most of the people here are remote from different parts of the country or the world, some from India, some from U.S., and some people are here in the class in US, some are there in India, right? So we use live meetings to make it uh, much more appealing to everyone to be able to attend this. All right. <clears throat> So 
So um, from code standpoint, obviously our core competency is SAP Consulting Services. We have been doing it since 1998. Um, you know, we have got you know close to now 100 plus consultants and staff between our offices in U.S. and India. Uh, all of Fortune 500 companies, you know, whom we do work for, there are 20 plus uh, across which we are actively delivering services either from U.S. or in some cases from India. Um, we are an SAP services partner, um, so aligned with SAP, um, you know, with, with a key partnership which we invest a lot of time and effort in. Similarly, over the last three years, we have also partnered with Amazon Web Services as a systems integration partner. Um, and this is this is for cloud um, oriented services. We have partnerships with IBM, with HP, and more recently, which is not stated here, with Microsoft. <clears throat> Both in general as an MPN member, Microsoft Partner Network member, and more specifically for Azure cloud-based services, which is Microsoft's cloud platform. We have affiliations with minority business enterprise here in the U.S. for state of New Jersey and a small business enterprise as well. Um, offices in Ramsey, New Jersey, um, and a solution delivery center in Gurgaon, India, and a regional headquarters in New Delhi. Um, and that's in brief <coughs> about Coach. Um, uh, in terms of a listing of clients, you know, where we continue to provide services, as you will see that they span across various verticals. Um, you know, some CPG, um, some EMC, which is entertainment, media, and communication. Uh, high-tech industry, retail industry, services sector, insurance, finance. Um, obviously, big names. The reason being that typically when you're implementing SAP, um, at least till very recently, the focus was on the large cap, the big firms, right, the Fortune 500, the Fortune 1000. And more recently, um, SAP is even being used by SMB, small and medium businesses, as well. And uh, <clears throat> our, our business model is, is very similar or simple as most of the consulting companies might have. Um, obviously, the vision is focused around SAP technology and uh, also software quality assurance, consulting and training services. Um, strategy in any consulting practice, you need to focus on your resources, right? So we try to hire, train, deploy, develop, and retain the best and the brightest, uh, giving us a mechanism for vertical integration. We rely significantly on our partnerships with some of the bigger players in the market. Um, we have here in the U.S. and as well as in the India um, a very good set of reputed vendors whom we deal with. Um, and we have a very comprehensive database called CBIS, you know, where we track um, the talent pool uh, in the U.S. market as well as in the India market, uh, more so in the U.S. market. Uh, our consultants are both full-time employees, W-2 employees, as well as contractors. And the customer population is large business and medium business, right? Small businesses are not there on the SAP bandwagon at this point, so that, that's the reason our focus is on large and medium businesses. So there's, there's nothing um, difficult or complex here. It is just that you need to execute this with precision, right, to be successful. Solution offerings, uh, you know, which we focus on uh, in and around the SAP space. Um, architect SAP, this is <coughs> SAP technical architecture strategy and design. This is my background. This is how 
uh, we started in 1998 um, around SAP technical architecture strategy and design. So we have a service offering in this space called Architect SAP. We've got Remote SAP, um, which is a best shore, i.e. a combination of onshore and offshore SAP NetWeaver Systems Administration service offering. Manage SAP, which is SAP Solution Manager Implementation and Consulting. Solution Manager is SAP's tool to manage um, SAP landscapes and SAP implementations. Um, Turbo SAP, which is <coughs> SAP Performance Management, uh, managing SAP's performance. Um, it's a very significant component for big SAP implementations. Assure SAP, uh, this is SAP Automated Testing, uh, Quality Assurance, using a suite of tools from HP uh, in and around products like Quick Test Professional, Load Runner, and more recently an SAP tool as well, which is called SAP Tau, Test Acceleration and Optimization Suite from SAP. We have a secure SAP um, service offering, which is around SAP security design and administration. Then we have got train SAP, which is SAP technical training, both in a public forum, which is similar to this, as well as uh, in a more specific one-on-one -on -one, um, scenario, you know, working with specific clients and outfits, you know, which need specific SAP training. And then we have a catch-all consult SAP, which is SAP staff augmentation uh, around providing capabilities and resources for specific SAP modules, whether they are functional in nature or SAP development, which is ABAP uh, development, as well as SAP basis systems administration, so essential staff augmentation. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll spend um, some time on my background. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I started with, um, you know, introducing myself earlier and also in the initial material which Amol sends out. So my name is Ajay Dhingra, and I will be, you know, spending the time over the next 64 hours or so uh, walking you through SAP NetWeaver Systems Administration Training. Um, I've got a little over 20 years of experience in IT. Um, a lot of my initial work or experience had been um, in big five management consulting firms like Pricewaterhouse and Accenture. Um, a significant part of my experience has been around SAP systems administration, project management, um, architecture, leading technology teams. I've done 12 plus SAP ERP implementations, around five for business warehouse, four for solution manager, and three now for APO or supply chain management. APO stands for advanced planning and optimization. And then, you know, more recently, a couple of implementations around Enterprise Portal, PI for Process Integration, BO for Business Objects, and BPC for Business Planning and Consolidation. Um, in and around these, eight of them have been full lifecycle implementations, a full lifecycle SAP implementation at a decent-sized company is a three-year exercise on an average, right? So you cannot do too many of them in your career, right? So if you have to do eight of them and there is no overlap, you're already talking about eight times three, 20, you know, 24 years or so, right? If there is some overlap between them, then, you know, maybe you get it down to 20 years or so, and hence what you see here. I'm a certified SAP basis consultant from uh, I think uh, 15 years ago now, right, and just continuing to refresh that certification. I've got my MBA and MS from Tier 1 universities in the U.S. You know, I did my master's from Drexel University in Philadelphia, 
and did my MBA from Stern Business School, New York University, right? And I have my engineering from back in India from the Institute of Technology. Um, and, you know, in terms of this curriculum itself, I've been doing this 15 years, um, delivering professional education in SAP and earlier in quality assurance as well using um, HP products, which were earlier being built and developed by a company called Mercury Interactive, uh, which was later bought by Hewlett Packard. Right, you, you also have my uh, LinkedIn profile, which you can look at, right, um, at leisure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Introduction to SAP, obviously, you know, this is why we are all here, right? So this is essentially, you know, where we are going to spend time. Um, so what is SAP? Obviously, the original acronym SAP itself is German in origin. Um, and the literal translation of that in English is systems applications and products in data processing, right? Right, and um, we'll start started in the, uh, it was started in 1972, you know, like most companies in, in that era by former IBM employees. Um, and obviously it's, used by 80 plus percent of the Fortune 500 companies, uh, a significant customer base uh, of, you know, close to 200,000 customers spread across 130 odd countries, um, and the flagship suite for them is what's called the SAP Business Suite, which has in it five products, um, and the most key of them you know, which is where SAP started most of its um, initial uh, success from is called ERP for Enterprise Resource Planning. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, essentially also called as ECC, Enterprise Core Component, or Central Component in some cases. And then we have got supply chain management, SCM, CRM for customer relationship management, SRM for supplier relationship management, PLM for product lifecycle management. Right? So, so the goal is what, right, is if you look at any enterprise, any company, it has customers which need to be managed. It has got vendors or suppliers which need to be managed. It has got a product whose life cycle needs to be managed, or multiple products hopefully, right? And to get material from suppliers and to get to a finished good which is being sold to customers, you need to go through a whole supply chain, which needs to be managed, right? <clears throat> and in the process of doing business, you will have financials, <clears throat> you'll have sales and distribution, you know, you will have material management, production planning, all the enterprise resources which need to be managed, and hence, these five products make the cornerstone of the SAP business suite. Okay. Um, there will be a lot of TLAs, right, which in itself is a three-letter acronym. Um, which, you know, and, and that's very common in any software, right, because that's how you make it difficult for your competition. That's how you introduce different licensing policy. That's how software companies make money, right. Um, obviously, our goal here is to make it simple for you so that you understand what these acronyms are, uh, which acronyms are really similar. Nothing has changed in that space, uh, which you will see as well. So we'll go through ERP, which is Enterprise Resource Planning, um, and it's also called ECC, ECC 6 being 
the most recent version for SAP's ERP product. And ECC itself stands for, I just mentioned, Enterprise Central or Core Components. And ECC includes what we all know of as different SAP modules, right? Um, so FICO, as it's pronounced, FICO is the finance and the controlling module. This is managing the money resource, right, in an enterprise. Then you've got sales and distribution, managing the act of selling and distributing your products. You've got material management, which manages your raw materials and your finished goods both. Production planning, which is the act of manufacturing your finished goods from your raw materials. HR, to manage the human resource. PS, project systems, which is around managing any project delivery work. Right, so let's say if you are a publishing company, publishing a book, you know, from the initial script all the way to the first reprint edition is a project, right, till you have an ISBN number, ISBN number, which uniquely identifies the book, the project. Warehouse management on how your finished goods and raw materials are being stored. And, you know, these are just a handful of modules, but some of the common ones. <laughs> Supply chain management, which was earlier called APO, which is the old name for SCM, and that acronym st stood for Advanced Planning and Optimizer. APO or SCM within itself has got multiple modules. We got Demand Planning, DP as it's called, SNP for Supply Network Planning, SNC for Supply network collaboration. This is a network, right? Uh, of your suppliers, your distribution centers, your factories, right? Etc. And then you've got TPVS as well, which is transportation planning and vehicle scheduling, right? How do you get your distribution network going in terms of? How will you transport your goods from the warehouse, you know, to your wholesale locations or your retail locations, then from your factories to your warehouse? Similarly, you've got CRM, SRM, PLM, which we talked about, right? And each of those products also have their respective modules. A functional resource would learn about these different modules, right? However, underlying all of these five products run on SAP's NetWeaver platform. And as a systems administrator, as a basis admin, as a NetWeaver admin, our goal is to understand that NetWeaver platform on which all of these products are built on. Because if we have a good understanding of that fundamental platform, we'll be able to do a good job, right? Very similar to a mechanic, right? A mechanic doesn't say, oh, if you drove in a Toyota Camry versus, you know, a Ford Escort, right? As long as he understands what a fuel injection system is, he should be able to do a decent enough job in repairing. Uh, now, what we talked about was the business suite, but that's not the only set of products SAP builds and sells. There are a lot of other SAP NetWeaver applications, um, which we'll discuss. We have got WAS, WAS, which is SAP Web Application Server, which is the basis of all web applications um, delivered through SAP. So that's a core component of SAP's NetWeaver stack. 
we've got SAP BI or BW, which stands for Business Intelligence or Business Warehouse, which is SAP's Business Analytical tool set. We got XI, which <coughs> was the earlier name for Exchange Infrastructure, which is now called PI for Process Integration, which is SAP's middleware product for transfer of information from system A to system B, very similar to other products in the industry like MQ series uh, from IBM. We got TIPCO as well. And then there are other, you know, EAI products. Uh, that whole genre of applications is called EAI, Enterprise Application Integration. Then we got Enterprise Portal, which is SAP's portal technology. We got MDM for Master Data Management. We got MII for Manufacturing Integration and Intelligence. There's some additional SAP products which are not part of the NetWeaver stack, you know, but they're built on the NetWeaver stack. Uh, Solution Manager. Um, and we'll be learning a lot about this and using this uh, to a great extent. We got BPC, which is business planning and consolidation. And then we have got BO or Bob J, business objects. Business objects in itself has got WebE for web intelligence, Excelsius, Crystal Reports. BODS, which is Business Object Data Services, it's an ETL product. <laughs> business Objects, uh, BO Federator for Data Federation. So these are some of the Business Object products. Business Objects was bought by SAP, I think, in 2007, 2008 time frame. We have got Governance. Risk and Compliance, GRC, which is in the security space applications as well. And a lot of SAP products now have got a pretty rich set of SOA, which is services-oriented architecture, i.e. web services, on which they rely. So there are a lot of web services in the picture. <laughs> Um, from a course content standpoint, uh, we'll be focusing on five PDFs, which will form the cornerstone of the syllabus. PADN 10 underscore 1 and 2, which is SAP NetWeaver Implementation and Operations 1. SAP NetWeaver AS Implementation and Operations 2, which is TADM 12 underscore 1 and 2. And then we have got the Oracle Database Administration for SAP, which is TADM 51. So these five PDF files uh, will form the cornerstone of what we do. We won't be going through all of them. All of them added together is, you know, close to 2,500 pages, right? There's no way you can complete that in 64 hours. So we'll be picking and choosing a lot in terms of what we cover and what we don't cover and how fast we cover certain topics. Okay. Um, all of the training material is going to be delivered to you um, <clears throat> in a training DVD which, you know, depending upon whether you are in U.S., India, or somewhere else in the world, would be delivered to you slightly differently uh, after you're fully registered. Um, for those who have registered for a while might have already received it. Others would be getting it, or it might be on its way. Um, also, uh, you will all become part of a Yahoo group. Um, 
the last digit would change based upon the patch it is, right? So you'll all be part of a Yahoo group, and that's very material and critical because all information which is going to be exchanged is going to be done uh, based upon emails going to the Yahoo group. Okay. Um, Uh, we spend a lot of time on doing specific hands-on exercises. And these hands-on exercises are critical because they tie the theory to actual practical experience with the products. And they have been very carefully built over the years. In addition, we'll be doing a full-blown uh, installation of SAP. So we have a custom installation guide, which will walk us through it. A lot of what we study is going to help you prepare for an SAP certification exam, right? Uh, I've given the certification exam link here, but um, this link has recently changed because a newer version of the certification exam is available, right? Um, but it's in the same series though, right? It's an SAP Certified Technology Associate Systems Administration. And typically we recommend, you know, you can choose it for SQL Server as a database or Oracle as a database. We recommend to take the one where Oracle is the database, right? Because you'll find Oracle more prevalent as a database technology for SAP in Fortune 500 companies. But in terms of Number of SAP installations with SQL Server as the backend database, the majority there is higher than Oracle. Okay. All right, so let me show you some of this material um, for people who have not received the DVD so that you're aware of <coughs> what it's going to look like. So this is <coughs> how the training DVD is going to look like <coughs> when you receive it. <coughs> we got a knowledge base folder which <coughs> over the years 
any questions people have asked me, right, where I felt that there was a need to provide a documentation or a white paper or some other kind of material, I've just added it here, right? So this is all in addition to what's in the training material. This is just <coughs> what I felt was necessary to kind of build a knowledge base. So even if somebody asked, Ajay, how did you prepare for your SAP certification? Whatever I did back in 1997, right, obviously, it's, uh, as I mentioned, I took it a number of years ago. I kind of just put it there, right, so just as an example. Um, if somebody asked me, you know, how do people do health checks, right, so I've given some health checks material as well, right, on an SAP system. Uh, if people asked questions on Oracle, I provided some, oh, sorry, not here. If if somebody asked um, information on Oracle, right, uh, architecture, so we provided some details here. Um, so, and so on and so forth, a lot of other documentation um, is in the knowledge base folder. We provide a lot of digital books as well. This material in itself is two to $300 worth or even maybe more. Right, it's got a BW step-by-step -step guide, it's got a BW certification guide, it's got an SAP R3 handbook. This is the Bible uh, for SAP, um, or used to be the Bible. It's booked by Jose Hernandez, uh, but over the years he has not updated it. But this is what I learned, you know, when, when I was starting my career in BASIS. Um, we got books on ABAP books on Oracle, SAP Systems Administration. Again, some, some might be dated, some are relatively new, um, but they're provided to you. SAPCO itself, but you're not going to get it from here. You know, Amol has provided you with the links from where to download SAP GUI from, and the SAP GUI installation guide is here as well. Uh, and then we got some material on R3 ECC. R3 was the old name for ECC, BWBI, APOSCM, SAP's portal. Um, and then SEM, uh, Strategic Enterprise Management. This used to be the precursor to SAP's BPC. And then we have got um, SAP new material. This is what we are going to focus on, we are going to focus on these five PDF files, right, you see at the bottom, right, so that's what I uh, in the slide. But the previous versions of those PDFs are also also out there, right, so if, if I bring up one of these, let's say, right, uh, you will see SAP material, right, um, this is how we're going to go through it, uh, you know, um, Especially, we're going to focus on the diagrams, right? Because that's where the learning is is more enriching. Okay. And each one is around five to six hundred pages, right? So that's why I said twenty-five hundred plus pages. SAP installation. This is where I said that we are going to be doing a custom installation. So this is a lot of the material on SAP uh, installation, right, um, the master guide, the installation guide if you're installing using Oracle database on a Linux backend or a SQL Server database on a Windows backend. Um, technical infrastructure guide, the media list, right, the, the DVDs and the CDs you need to use to do the installation. Some student material uh, around, you know, for people who are not familiar with Linux as an operating system, there's material on Linux available, right, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, because this is where we'll be doing the installation. Um, some RHEL documentation, Red Hat Enterprise Linux documentation, right, the previous one was generic Linux, right, this is specifically RHEL. Solution Manager Guides, because this is the SAP product we'll be installing. 
and literature on how did we do the VM server installation because the installation is going to happen on a virtual machine. How did we do the Linux installation for the base server, right? So you will see some documentation and some screenshots around how we went through the process, right? Uh, the actual installation guide for installing SAP and the Oracle database is separate, right? Which will actually be mailed to you. Uh, and it will look it will look like this. Um, Yeah, it looks like this solution manager custom installation guide. So you will see it's very well drafted. This is the architecture which we are following, right? Everything is running on a PowerEdge, Dell PowerEdge SC 1430 server, which is running Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, and on which we are running VMware, and we have got four other guest operating systems on top of the host operating system. And each of the guest operating systems is itself an RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's got a dual core Intel Xenon processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and 100 gigs of hard disk, right? So on each one, we can do an SAP installation. So four installations can run in parallel. Uh, for benefit of time, we only do two of them in parallel so that people can get better performance. So you will understand about this virtualization technology as as we continue. Um, and then, you know, very comprehensive, you know, providing all the details, screenshots, right, so that you can comprehend it, right? Um, because there's a lot of learning in an SAP installation itself, right? When you're installing SAP, a lot of learning, which happens there. Okay. And at the bottom end of this is the Oracle database prerequisites and Oracle installation itself using OUI, which is Oracle Universal Installer. Um, and then, you know, as you saw in here, you know, we have got hands-on exercises, right? So we've got exercises for day two, day three, day four, day five, six, and eight, right? So if I bring up one of these exercises, right, it's very well called out what you need to do. It gives you screenshots and everything so that you can learn effectively, right? So this is for day two exercise. Doing the exercises is half the challenge, right? Um, we run this like almost like a school to ensure that you are forced to do the work, right? Uh, and in there is where the inherent learning is. Okay. 
Um, So if we come back, um, so this, I, as I told you, this is somewhat dated, but you know what we can do is we can actually correct it now so that all of you are aware of it. Uh, yeah, we can provide material. We don't do it as an exercise. Yes, installation guides are available. But we do not do that exercise, right? Because limited time, right? You can do only so much. Um, So if we go here, net viewer certifications. Right, so So if you see, um, TADM is our series. Oh, actually, this is for OSDB migration. Yeah. Right. Um, this is MaxDB. This is MaxDB. This is SQL. This is SQL. This is Oracle. Okay. So you have a choice to either take these two, right? So this one is Oracle with NetWeaver 7 or EHP 2. EHP stands for Enhancement Pack 2. Or take this for NetViewer 7.31, right? So at this point, going forward, I would say 7.31, which is the latest version of NetViewer technology, right? So, um, so this is it's a three-hour exam, 180 question, uh, sorry, 180 minutes, 80 questions. Cutoff score is 63%, but you need to obviously you know, shoot for a higher number, right? Um, it tells you in which area, what percentage of questions are going to be there, right? So, it gives you some of those details. Um, installation related questions, let's say. Uh, transport management questions. Okay, um, so that's what
what it is, um, and um, okay, so we can update it here so that I don't have to do the same exercise again. Right, and this was. I1 underscore 731. So that's the newer version. Hi. And we are a Pearson View uh, certification center here in the US. So, you know, a lot of people take the exam here itself. Okay, um, a unique training methodology, right, the way we, actually I think what I didn't do is I didn't finish. The training DVD. Um, Live meeting recordings, right? So obviously we record everything. Even the session going on right now is being recorded, right? For the last one hour approximately. We record everything so that it becomes easier for you to go back, look at your, uh, if you have missed something, revise it, etc. So we used to, as part of this course, also cover BW for business warehouse and then, you know, we People told the course was too long, so we uh, removed PW from the curriculum, but we still maintain the recordings here and, you know, share with you, right? So there are one, two, three, four, five, six recordings, right? Roughly 30 to 40 megabytes each. So this is close to 16 hours of recording. Um, the basis itself, right, this is from a old, very old batch, 19 batch, we provide anyhow. But your own batch is going to be recorded as well. So you will have the benefit of reviewing the recordings um, for your own batch. And then solution manager, a lot of people have expressed interest. We don't teach solution manager anymore. We used to. But, and from back then, we have provided the solution manager recordings as well. Um, and then we got some frequently asked questions, how to connect to live meeting recordings, how to install SAPQI, et cetera, right? All of these you're going to receive from Amol anyhow, right? And this is part of the DVD. Um, Let's go back to the presentation. Um, so unique training methodology, right? And what makes us different um, is what we're going to look at. Uh, so, number one, we take a lot of pride in our instruction material and how we provide the instructions, right? So, we are, you're not getting trained by a person who has just themselves learned a year ago or two years ago, right? So, that experience does indeed make a difference. 
you will be doing your own individual installations on your own server, right? So that in itself, you know, provides a lot of confidence because you're starting from scratch. Um, every student would be doing a Solomon installation as part of this training material. You will have access to the servers for three months after the training has been completed, right? So you can always connect to them, practice. We'll provide you with a training DVD which has got all the training material, right? We talked about this. 64 hours of training session, right? 24 by 7 global access. You will have 24 by 7 access to our servers and all the training related questions will be answered promptly, right? So if you post something on our Yahoo group, you'll get an answer. Um, you will keep in touch with the instructor as well as the other members of the batch through Yahoo groups and you will not have to wait for an answer to a question till next week, right? So it's not like you ask a question and it's only getting answered next Saturday, right? So we have Yahoo Group, Shrikant, you know who is, um, you see him here, Shrikant Coach. He is the individual who's going to be answering those questions. Uh, sometimes he might refer to me as well. Um, So we don't provide um, certification questions outside of, as we go through the material, we will um, give you insight that is this topic important from certification standpoint. And if, you know, we know that this kind of certification questions have been asked in the past. For people who do register for our KPSO program, Coach Placement Service Offering, do get the certification questions from us uh, as part of that initiative. Okay. Session recordings, we record every training session. Um, you know, obviously you, you could attend the training in class or remotely through live meeting, but even then if you miss it, you have the recordings and the recordings are available to you for up to one year. KPSO, Coach Placement Service Offering. Um, so there's a typo here. I uh, apologize for that. So we offer placement assistance, right? Um, you know, with you know how to how to present yourself from a resume standpoint, mock interviews, getting you certified, giving you enough insight as to how to approach the job market. That's all part of KPSO. That's a one-on-one -on -one session which I do, and it's ten hours per person, right? So one-on-one, -on -one, so it's more dedicated and focused on your background. There's a schooling approach, so we've got weekly homework weekly in-class quiz and we are expecting that the homework uh, and revising what you have learned in the class going through the recordings again will require you to spend 20 hours on a weekly basis outside of the eight hour class right if you do less than that that means you won't be able to understand the material to the fullest it's very important to kind of devote uh, that kind of time. SAPGUI connectivity, right? So we want to spend some time on this to make sure everyone is able to connect um, to it. Um, Amol, I'm not sure if I have the right link here or if you have already provided the instructions to the students to download it. I have provided the instructions to download it. So I think students might be able to download it. Okay. So a lot of you might have already downloaded. Um, 
And if so, you know, I would highly encourage if you have downloaded, try and connect. You know, we'll spend maybe five to ten minutes to make sure that I can answer some questions around people connecting to SD1, um, which is the system we are running here. You can connect to it from the class. You can connect to it from Park Centra. You can connect to it from home. Use a user ID, a Shishia, and welcome. It's a centralized server. Everyone should be able to connect to it. Uh, if you are not able to, then you will do it as a homework. But I would at least want to make sure that I can quickly answer some questions in this space on how people can can connect to it. So this is the SAP logon pad. Right. Um, if you have downloaded um, if, if you have downloaded the SAP GUI from the location we have mentioned, um, you know, then you should be able to you will see S D one in there and you will see S D one internet, which is what you will use if you're uh connecting from home. Um, if you are not connecting from home, if you are connecting from our office right here in Ramsey, then you will use an intranet, something like this kind of a setting, right? Um, so Namesh, you can actually connect from there. Please welcome is the password. If the machine is on. Um, Right, so once you click on it, you will see the main uh, logon screen, right? Not much of a difference. And I'm just connecting using my ID. You will be using Shishya Welcome, right? So it would be Shishya S-H-I-S-H-Y-A Welcome. I can use that as well. I'll log you in, right? So I just want to give, you know, five odd minutes for people to kind of make sure if you have downloaded, try and connect. I can see how many people have connected by going to a specific transaction called SM04. So... So these some some you know this coach zero this is my machine right these are different people you would recognize your machines because you're using the same ID Chetan PC admin PC HP DV3000 Opera room okay.
All right. So let's see how many people have been able to connect. Okay, that's a decent enough number. Uh, <coughs> okay, so that kind of gives you a sense of, um, you know, how you would be connecting remotely, right? Um, okay, all right, so let's... Uh, Let's move on. And also the material you have received from Amol is going to uh, tell you how to create your own ID as well, right? Which, so rather than using Shisha, you can use that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time on why SAP basis, right? Why SAP Systems Administration, right? Um, systems Administration in SAP is called Basis Administration, right? So NetView Administration, Systems Administration, Basis Administration, they're all synonymous. NetView is the foundation to all SAP products, right? And hence we want to focus on it. If you know the foundation, we can support pretty much all SAP products. Definition of NetWeaver. Um, for definition of NetWeaver, we would go to SAP Tech, Unit 1, page 16. So I'm going to open up that PDF file, and we're going to start with the definition there and perhaps spend some time on, on NetWeaver, right? Um, so let me... Let me do that. And this is Saptec. This is right, the definition of NetViewer. That's the important one, so I want us to... Right, so SAP NetViewer is a comprehensive technology platform which can be integrated smoothly into existing systems. Because of the minimum amount of expenses of internal company integration, right? So it's a comprehensive technology platform, right? And what does it have in that comprehensive technology platform on which all the business suite products are built and other composite applications or X apps are built is the following. And this is called the refrigerator diagram, right? Because it looks like a refrigerator, right? With different shells. Um, I'm going to go to more comprehensive refrigeration diagram, which is this one. Okay. So this is the NetWeaver platform, right? So at the base of it, it has got the application platform. So I'm talking about this layer here at this point, right? So at the base of it, it has got the application platform or web application server. The web application server has got a layer of DB and OS abstraction. That means it can run on multiple databases. It can run on multiple operating systems. So as we know, the more common operating systems that SAP runs on is obviously Microsoft's Windows Server. Different flavors of Linux different flavors of Unix. 
And from a database perspective, it runs on SQL Server, it runs on DB2, it runs on Oracle, and it runs on iBase, uh, it's called ASC, as well as MaxDB, and more recently, the HANA database, right? Um, and then from a web application server standpoint, it has got a split personality. It has got the J2EE, the Java Enterprise Engine, right? So it's got a Java stack. And then it's got the ABAP stack. So it's got two stacks, which make up the web application server, right? So you've got the Java stack and the ABAP stack. And then on top of it, you've got the PI, the process integration. This is enterprise application integration suite, which is sitting on top of the web application server. It requires both the stacks, the Java as well as the ABAP stack. So this is the PI, or the process integration technology, which is also part of the NetWeaver stack. And so you, you see on the left-hand side, they're telling you the products of SAP, right? Web application server, exchange infrastructure, XI, now called PI. Then you've got master data management, MDM. Clear? For doing master data management in SAP. Master data is like a customer master, vendor master, material master. Then you've got the business information warehouse. BW, um, right here. So that's also based upon NetWeaver. This gives you analytical capability, data warehousing capability. And then what's a very key part of NetWeaver technology is the SAP Enterprise Portal, SAP EP. And this has, as part of it, knowledge management, collaboration, and the true portal engine, right? So these this L-shaped. Right? Portal, collaboration, knowledge management, right? These all form part of SAP Enterprise Portal. And then last but not the least, there is the mobile infrastructure. This provides access to the people outside, right? Uh, through multi multiple channels, right, including mobility. Um,
Okay, so that gives us a sense of NetWeaver. Um, yeah, so everyone would be doing an installation, right? So you will have your, I will do the first time around, then you'll do it independently, right? Um, if you want to redo, you have, you'll have enough time. You've got one full week to do installation. You can, in that week itself, do it multiple times. But I've got no objection if you want to redo it again. Um, okay, so coming back to SAP technical architecture, right? So. We need to kind of get a sense of SAP technical architecture. And, and the reason we are even doing this is I just want to give you guys a flavor of how is the training going to ensue, right? What is the level of details we are going to get, uh, we are going to cover so that you feel comfortable about it, right? Uh, that what you are getting into. So we're going to look at unit three of TADM 10 underscore one, and this will give you a sense of how various topics are going to get covered. Okay. So, we're going to go to Unit 3. Right, so this is, Unit 3 is going to talk about SAP system kernel, right? So, so this unit, right, and we're going to start with this unit, we're going to cover it again, but I just wanted to spend half an hour, right? So in this unit, we're going to talk about client-server technology, right, which is the basis of SAP. Uh, names of the processes within an SAP NetViewer application server. We're going to define the term, what does instance mean? And what does a central instance mean? Understand how application server ABAP, AS stands for application server ABAP work. List the AS ABAP processes and describe their purpose. Describe how requests for AS ABAP are processed, the basic Java terminology. Do the exact same thing for AS Java. How does that work? Name the AS Java processes and describe their purpose. Describe how requests to AS Java are processed. Explain the term central services within SAP NetWeaver application server Java, right, so on and so forth. So you kind of get a sense that it's going to talk about the architecture of ABAP stack, architecture of the Java stack. So principal architecture of <coughs> SAP NetWeaver application server, which has got two stacks in it. Um, it's client server in nature, right? So this is the hardware oriented view of client server, which we are all aware of that there's a client machine, there's a server machine, there is either a local area network or a wide area network within it. But that's the hardware oriented view. The software oriented view is different, right? There the concept is not of a client machine and a server machine. There the concept is who is requesting information. The requester is a client. Who is processing and providing the information or provisioning the information? That's the server, right? So requester and the server. This is the evolution of client server as we are aware of, right? Everything started with a two tiered model. That means there's a big fat backend, AS400 or a mainframe, mm. and essentially a, a front end technology, right? From there we all went to three tiered architecture we, where we kind of split the backend into a database server and an application server and still maintain the front end. Then came the advent of the browser where we split the front end into a web server and a browser, right? Now we have taken a full circle where to some extent 
the browser and the web server have again come together into what we now know as apps, right? So in an app there is no browser, right? But you know, apps are being served by web services, so in the back end there is not perhaps not even a, a fully dedicated web server as long as you got some machine which can serve a web service call. So you know, so from device independent browsers which were very, very thin, you have got into apps which are thicker than a browser. But the beauty is that you can download them. You don't need to install them, right? which is obviously not shown here. That's a more recent advent in technology. Um, what's an instance, right? So this is very, very important because as a systems administrator, you need to know what is a system, what is an instance. So instance is an administrative unit that combines SAP system components providing one or more services. The services provided by an instance are started and stopped together. You use a common instance profile to set the parameters of all the components of an instance. Each instance has its own buffer area, so that means its own memory. An instance runs on one physical machine, right? So it cannot span across multiple machines. An instance is identified by a system ID and an instance number. So these all statements are very, very material to understand. So here is an example of instances of an SAP system. So in this case, on the database server, there's an instance running, perhaps a database instance, right? They have not shown it like that, but that's running there. And then on three computers, on three physical machines, there are four instances running. This machine has got two instances, a central instance, a central services instance, and then this machine has got one dialog instance, this machine has got another dialog instance, right? And they all have instance numbers, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And you can connect to these instances using SAP GUI, like the way you did just now, or using a browser, right? So you can do both SAP GUI connectivity as well as through a browser. Um, so dialog instances are instances which are non-central instances. That means these are additional application servers or additional instances. Central instance is very critical or a central service instance is very critical and let's look at the definition. The central instance of an SAP system is distinguished by the fact that it offers services that no other instance in the system offers. For an application server, ABAP, these are the message server and the NQ work process. Right? So for ABAP application server, this is the message server and the NQ server. Right? So these work processes do not exist in any other instance except the central instance. For an application server Java, you can recognize the central instance by the software deployment manager, right? So what is key there is the SDM, software deployment manager. The central services instance provides central services of the AS Java, the message service, and the NQ service, right? So central services instance is the central instance, but for Java. And it provides the message service, the NQ service, for the Java stack. For AS ABAP, these services can also be moved to the ABAP central services instance for high availability reasons. These AS ABAP systems therefore no longer have a central instance. Right. 
Um, so you can have a central services instance, right, for ABAP as well, as long as it is running the message server and the NQ server, right? So those two are important to recognize. So here is an example of an SAP system, right, uh, in which they're talking about different work processes. So it's very important to understand these work processes, right? So every SAP instance has what's called a dispatcher. Dispatcher dispatches the workload to the underlying work processes. If your workload is of the type of printing, it will dispatch it to the spool work process. If your workload is of the type getting a lock, it will dispatch it to an NQ work process. Right, so each system has a dispatcher. Each instance has a dispatcher. And all the instances in a given system talk to each other. All the dispatchers in a given system or all the instances in a given system talk to each other using a message server. That's why message server is a single point of failure and it runs on the system central services. Then you have the gateway work process. Right. This lets an SAP system talk to a non-SAP system. Or lets two SAP systems talk to each other. It's a gateway from one system to another system. Then you have the ICM process for Internet Communication Manager. This is the process which reads the incoming web requests. And those incoming web requests can either go to an ABAP application server or go to a Java application server. <coughs> right? An ABAP dispatcher or a Java dispatcher as shown here. That means that both ABAP and Java can understand or respond back to HTTP traffic. And then I told you that there is an ABAP dispatcher. ABAP dispatcher dispatches workload to the different work processes. The work processes could be of the type dialog, background, NQ update spool. Dialog is for interactive workload. Background is for batch workload. NQ is for lock management. Update or V process is for updating the database records. Spool is for print management or printing. Um, that was on an ABAP stack what we just looked a similar diagram on a Java stack right looks like what the dispatcher and the message services remain the same way there is an NQ service still in addition this is unique to Java stack there is an SDM software deployment manager 
and then the Java dispatcher dispatches workload to the Java server process and you could have more than one of these so unlike ABAP you don't have a dialogue work process or a batch work process or a spool work process you only have a server work process or they're called server nodes and you could run one or more of those Um, so in here, this is on top a ABAP stack only system, right? The database has got the ABAP stack. You got a central instance which has got a message server, gateway, ICM, dispatcher, and multiple work processes underneath. This is a Java stack system, Java only stack which has got SDM, Java Central Services, which is NQ service and message service, and a Java dispatcher, and multiple server node processes. And then you have what is called a dual stack. And you know when you do your installation, you'll be doing this kind of an installation where there are both the stacks installed together. So in the database, you've got both the ABAP stack and the Java stack. And also you've got the ABAP stack running here. This is the ABAP instance. This is the Java instance, right? It's called the dual stack. And this diagram should be etched in your brain, right? Because this is an example of a application server, ABAP architecture. So in this case, how many instances are running? How many SAP instances are running? In this diagram? No. Two instances running, as Anand and Vitali have mentioned. Two of them, one central and one dialog instance. Right? Um, how many NQ work processes are there? How many NQ work processes are there in this diagram? Yeah, so there's one, one NQ work process. Right. Similarly, there is one message server as well because they only run on the central system. So this E is for the NQ work process and this MS is for the message server. Message server is talking to both the dispatchers. So how many total dialogue work processes are there in this system? How many total dialogue work processes? How many total dialog work processes are there? Few answers. Four is the right answer. There are four dialog work processes. Two running on the central instance and two running on the dialog instance, but together they form one system, so there are four dialog work processes. And we're going to end there, right? So this was just my attempt to kind of tell you 
Um, what to expect from an SAP technical architecture standpoint, right? Similarly, we will look at few transactions in SAP, right? Just to kind of get your hands dirty. And of those, one of them you've already done, which is SM04, right? We already did SM04 transaction here, which is a user list of people who are logged on. However, SM04 has a limitation. It only gives you the people who are logged on on that particular application server where you are logged on. But if there were multiple app servers, you have to change the transaction. You have to use slash n. Slash n means a new transaction. AL08. If you look at AL08, then it shows you both the application servers, right? So in this system, there are two application servers, one with a system number 00, and the other with a system number 02, right? So there's one user connected here. All the other users are here. Now if I refresh it, suddenly the number of users are increasing here as well, right? as I do more AL08, right? Not that you guys are logging into this other server as well, but the act of figuring out who is logged in, it needs to make an RFC call, remote function call, and hence, it seems as if you are connecting there because you're making a remote function call. That's why this number is increasing here, right? Four. One, two, three, four, right? These are RFC calls, not interactive users. Right? So interactive users on zero two is still zero. Right? That means most of the people are connected to zero zero. And both of these instances run on the server called Saraswati, right? Saraswati is the host on which SD1 as a system is running, and it has got a database to it and it's got two SAP instances running, right? And we can, <coughs> and you, you, you guys will be doing all of this, but you know, we can party into it, so we can actually connect into Saraswati, right? As SID ADM, SD1 ADM, that means SAP System Administrator, uh, right, so I've connected into it. This is a Linux machine, right, RHEL. I can do PS minus EF, which is listing processes, and I can grep, is Oracle running? Aura, we are all the Oracle work processes running, right? I can do PS minus EF, and I can grep for SD1, right? Or I can just grab for SAP. I can more it. So these are the SAP processes. MS is for message server. This is dispatcher work process, right? Dispatcher or a normal work process. ICM. Gateway. Right? This is for 00. zero instance. This is for 02 instance, dialog instance, D02. Again, we'll study more about this, but to kind of give you a sense of what is in the back end. Right? So that's the level of detail we'll be going in. You'll be connecting to the back end, connecting to Oracle. Abraham Diamond. Has left the conference. Okay. Okay. Now, this is an introduction class, right? So I don't need to do too much, right? I just want to whet your appetite. I'm not ready to feed you yet. There is no fixed limit, right? Because it depends on how much capacity, how much CPU power is there, 
how have you tuned your instance, how much memory is there, right? And what your profile parameters are set to. Right? Okay, so AL08 we looked at. Let's look at the next transaction. SM51, this displays the number of instances which are there in the system. We already know that there are two of them. Right? So these are the two, 00, zero and zero 02. Zero zero and zero two. So there are two instances, 00 and 02. 00, zero is the central instance, right, because it says NQ here. Okay. Um, so that's another transaction, right, uh, in this list. SM37 gives you the background jobs, the jobs running in the background. Right? So if I go to SM37, slash N, SM37, I can look at any job by name or any job run under a specific name. So if I say anything which the user Sishya has run today, show me. And there could be tons of these jobs which ran in the system today. Right? So these are all the jobs. Right? Finished in green means it ran successfully. Red means it cancelled, right? And then one needs to look at the reasons, so on and so forth. But these are just the jobs which ran in the system today. Right? And you can look at that in transaction SM37. SM50 and SM66 are very good transactions to know. SM50 gives you the work processes in the system. So how many work processes are there in this instance? Right, this is instance 00, zero right? How many work processes are there? 21 work processes, right? 0 to 20. And you can see which, how many are dialogue, how many are update, how many are NQ, how many are background, school, right? And this is the PID, the process ID. And you can see this process in the background as well, right? So if I want to see, if I do PS minus EF grep 27581, this is that process, right? So this process is at the OS level, which is being shown at the SAP GUI level. This is a certification question. 
they will show you a screenshot like this and ask you to correlate them. Right? So what you see in white highlight here and what you see in the orange highlight here are the same thing. One is at the back end Unix or Linux level you are seeing and the other is you are seeing in SAP GUI. Okay. Um, similarly, there are uh, other transactions, right? Um, SM66 shows you the running work processes, right? If I do SM66, these are work processes which are actively doing something and even though we are all connected, it's very rare to see that the system is doing anything, right? You don't see anything in the list because it goes very fast. However, if I refresh itself, that in itself is a transaction, right? So if I press the F8 function key here, that in itself is a transaction. So what we can do is if we just press the F8 and keep it pressed, right? So there are 18 students in the class, maybe, you know, 12 or 13 of them are logged in. If all of us click the F8 key at the same time and have it pressed, then you will see maximum two, three, or sometimes four work processes get utilized, right? So that's how fast it is processing your requests, right? Just to kind of give you an idea. This is called multiplexing. That means one dialog work process can serve me today, somebody else tomorrow, right? So it just keeps multiplexing. That's the SM66 transaction. Then you got SM12. SM12 shows you the lock entries. If I go to slash n SM12, I can say that show me all the lock entries in client 800. There are no lock entries, right? However, if I start a new session, right, this is like a new session, like in a browser you can start a new session. And here if I go to SU01, which is how to create a new user, and I go to user Shishya, if I go to display, I'm displaying this user. Has it taken a lock on the user? No. This is held by somebody else. But if I actually go to a change mode, now I intend to change the user. Will it have taken a lock? Yes. So now it is under my name, Shishya, exclusive lock. Right? Because it knows that I have an intent of changing it. It has, it has taken this lock, which means if somebody else tries to go in and could be, could be another session from me itself, right? So if I see, show you, so this is one session where I have the lock. This is the session which is the locker. And this is another session where I go to SU01 and I want to go to Sushi and change it. Will it let me change it? No. It says maintenance of user Sushi locked by Sushi. Right? That means you cannot change it. Somebody else is changing it. Somebody else is changing it and hence it won't let you change it. Uh, <coughs> However, as a system admin, you can kill sessions, right? So sometimes you have these lock entries there and you can just kill a session. 
And in a lot of, you know, big outsourcing shops, you know, where relatively junior people are joining the team, they don't realize that what they did if they kill a session, right? So this user just calls in a ticket to the help desk. Oh, maintenance is locked. You know, how can I get in? They'll say, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I learned that I could go to SM50 transaction, right? And if I see there is a session running, right? Right? And if I want, I can kill it, right? So here you can also see in SM04, Right, SU01, where is my SU01, right, right here, sessions, right, so SU01, they say, oh yeah, this is the session, end session, right, right, and now this guy will be able to go and change, right. But you don't want to do it, right? Because instead of SU01, if this was a bank balance transaction, you have just lost a lot of money, right? Because you don't know what the other guy was doing while you killed their session, right? They could have changed, they could have done a transaction which probably was withdrawing money from an ATM machine. Okay. So here, if I see that lock transaction has gone away, right? This is a new one from 59, which has come in as the this, this second session came into being. <laughs> right, so this, just giving you some examples. SM12 we looked at, SM13 we looked at. SM21 is an, another important one. This is the system log. Any issues happening with the system are reported in SM21. Reread the system log. These are all the log messages, right? So, in fact, there are some error messages which we should eventually look into, right? It looks like it's repetitive in nature. It's all coming from some of these bad jobs which are running in the background. Okay. And then there is the SMO2 message which is system message, right, which I can put on the system, right, so I can put a message on the system. You guys don't do it. It's annoying in a sense, right? Um, okay, so FAQs is going to be the next topic we cover, right? So this message is there. So anytime you do a dialogue step again, like if I do a back arrow, I'm doing a dialogue step, it's going to pop up. Right? But it's only going to pop up once since you logged in, right? Not again and again. Okay. Why we couldn't use only one instance always, central, for example? No, because there's a dispatcher, right? Dispatcher's task is to dispatch incoming workload. So as your number of work processes keeps increasing in an instance, because you have to support multiple users, at some point, your bottleneck is going to be the dispatcher. Right? Why? Because the dispatcher cannot dispatch fast enough. Even though there are a number of work processes, your system is very big, dispatcher will become a bottleneck. It's very similar to asking the question which Vitaly is asking is, why can't I have only one section in the whole school for one grade? Why? Because the teacher cannot teach so many students simultaneously. Right? She will become a bottleneck or he will become a bottleneck. So the dispatcher can also be looked at as a cab dispatcher, right? So if you've got a cab dispatcher and there's one individual 
you know, they cannot manage more than 20 to 25 cabs or taxis, right? Because they cannot keep track of all of them. So you have multiple instances, but then you've got multiple instances, that means multiple physical dispatchers. Somehow those dispatchers need to talk to each other. That's what a message server is, right? So if you have a big taxi cab dispatching service, Right, so you know they'll have multiple dispatchers in them, right? So you call the 800 number, you'll get to one of the dispatchers. But the fact that you're calling one single 800 number means there's like a message server. Will you email us the PowerPoint presentation? Sure, we can do that. You have the whole recording, so you got more than that. Right, you'll get the recording as well, so it has the PowerPoint presentation, you asking questions, me answering questions, everything is being recorded, right? Um, all right, so let's move on. Let's go to frequently asked questions. How are the opportunities in SAP? Obviously, it is the most lucrative and sought after field in IT, right? Um, furthermore, basis is the most lucrative within SAP, right? Um, so a lot of opportunities from that perspective. Do you provide any certification? Yes, you will receive a certificate from us. But I will be frank to you, that certificate has got no value. The certification which has got value is the SAP certification, which has an exam attached, right? So that's the one you need to really prepare for. Do you help in placements after the course is done? Yes, and we have a specific process for it, a specific offering for it called KPSO, Coach Placement Service Offering. Do you provide remote access to the servers? Yes. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, from anywhere in the world, right? Like you're connecting today, right? How do you attend the classes remotely? Through Microsoft Live Meeting. We'll provide you with a username, password to log into the Microsoft Live Meeting. And just like you're doing it today, you'll do it for every, every session. How long after the training do I have access to the servers for three months after the training? The training itself is three months, or the training itself is, you know, maybe two and a half months. Um, it's eight sessions, so that itself is two months, and then, you know, sometimes you have to cancel one or two sessions in the middle, right? And even after the three months, if you really need, we'll provide you access. There's a nominal fee, but even that we waive in most of the cases. Idea is not to penalize you, idea is to educate you, right? And this is a case study, right? People say, you know, Ajay, it's difficult to break into this market, right? We are getting trained. The answer is no. So I kind of gave a case study here, right? So this is a student, her name MD, right? She attended SAP Batch 29. Right, so back in 2010, and then attended the KPSO. Yeah, big gap, right? She attended the class from April to June, three months. Attended the KPSO from October to Jan, right? She got certified in 2010, December, right? So in the... Um, uh, Okay, so I think I have a typo here. This is 2000. So this is not, not, I don't have a typo, but just to be clear, this is 2010, October till Jan 2011, right? And in the middle of that, she got certified. She 
started her market, we started her marketing and interviewing process in Feb to March, and she joined Accenture on April 18, 2011, right? So, but this gap she had because of some personal reasons, right? Outside of it, she did pretty well. Attended all the sessions, that too remotely. She was in Canada. Very focused, asked questions before the start of each class, right? That means she has read her material. Very active in the class, completed all the homework on time, including the installation exercise. And not only did she get certified, she got certified with 90% marks. This is a scanned copy of her certification exams results. Right, so December 2010, I blanked out her name, 90%. Right, in most of the areas, she scored 100%, right? In one area where we think we do a pretty good job, she had 50% system configuration, which I was very upset with her about. But outside of that, she overall, on an aggregate, is 90%, which is fairly good. We have had people get 99 as well. Right, so that means 99 means you probably only had one question wrong. Okay, um, your turn. Right. Any questions which I can try and answer? Obviously, there were a few questions people asked along the way. If there are any more questions, we are live meeting. We are the phone. I can try and answer those. Okay. And after that, we are going to conclude. Uh, this should give you a good introduction and orientation into what you are getting into. Uh, question. Between the different versions of SAP, are there uh, changes like marginal or very large? Yeah, so the question from Nimesh is between different versions of SAP, are there marginal or quantum changes? Um, the answer is depends, right? Different versions, different modules have got different, in some cases marginal changes, some cases quantum. Um, Right, so both both exist. Um, however, um, some of the fundamental technology like NetWeaver does not change in a quantum fashion, right, um, from version to version. So that's why when somebody earlier asked that some of the training material dates back to 2008, you know, I said there's not a material difference, right, because these fundamental technologies don't change that fast. But on functionality side, yes, there could be changes. And even on technology side, there could be changes. But that should not, you know, your goal has to be to understand 80 to 90% of what there is, right? Even if you don't get all the changes from version to version, so be it, right? Look at it this way, right? If you know how to use MS Office, Right, you're going from version 2010 to 2013. You don't attend another training class, right? So same way. But there are changes. In some cases, marginal. In some applications, some cases quantum. Right? You might not even notice that probably they introduced 100 new functions in Excel. You probably never even took care of it or looked into it because you never used them in the first place. But when you do use it, you might then notice it. Same is the case here. With any technical product, right? A lot of new functionality we don't use. I once read a research that 80% of the technology in your smartphone you don't use, right, on an average. You only use, on an average, 20% of the technology which is in there. Any other questions? <coughs> if not, what we're going to do is um, Amol is going to send out the recordings from this session. And he's also going to send out the PPT itself so that you have a copy of it. For people who have registered, and have logged into SAP, well and good. 
uh, ensure that you have your DVDs who have not registered, make sure you do register in time so that you do get your DVDs in time so that you are ready to get started in earnest next week. Uh, otherwise, it becomes very difficult to catch up. Um, and uh, without prior knowledge of SAP or networking or administration, is there any document to review which can help us to get up to speed? Um, I would say that you know, as long as you start reading the material up front, uh, start looking at the recordings up front, right, which are all there in the DVD, it'll help. Um, a good basis administrator happens to be a person who has had background in um, one of these three areas, right, either as a database administrator or as a system administrator or as a network administrator, right? But that doesn't mean that you need to be one of those those people just tend to do better. So anything you can do to kind of beef up your knowledge in database administration, system administration, network administration should help. A good basis guy will feel very comfortable talking to a DBA, talking to a network admin, talking to a system admin, like a Unix system admin or a Windows system admin. And that's why good basis admins are very, very difficult to get by, right? Because they're really good at a lot of different things. Can you email the old exercises from the previous batch? No, we don't email them ahead of time. We'll give them just at the spur of the moment, right? Um, um, you know, so all the exercises are gonna be uploaded to the Yahoo group. I've got no IT background at all. How will this training help me? Well, you'll have a background after the training, right? So you'll be surprised who all have taken training from us over the last 15 years, from what background they came. There can't be a background which I can even think of, right? There have been people who pumped gases, right, in a gas station, to people who were selling lipsticks and Macy's, to people who were doctors, to people who were CAs let alone people from an IT background, right? And all have benefited. Uh, the good thing about IT is that it's a good melting pot. As long as you have the right aptitude, you will be very successful, right? Unlike other areas, it does not discriminate that, oh, you, you, know, you didn't take the bar exam, you can't practice as a lawyer, right? You didn't take the CPA or a CA exam, you can't be an accountant, right? Or you, you, you know, you didn't take the medical licensing exam, you can't practice as a doctor, right? IT is relatively open from that standpoint. If it were closed, I think it would be good for people who are already in there because there would be a barrier to entry, right? Barrier to entry always increases your earning potential. Um, Next question is, do you provide BI training or SAP mobile? No, we don't provide either of those two trainings, right? Uh, in PPT, I saw PFCG, but you missed that one. Can you explain in few words what's the transaction about? Yes. PFCG is for profile configuration, for configuring security profiles, right? So when you create a security profile, that's the transaction you use to create one. So if I go... PFCG, right? Security profiles or roles are maintained using it. So if I wanted to create a role, like this is what we, we do an exercise. So this is a help desk role. We created in batch 44, created by Ajay Dingra. It lets you do what? A junior basis admin working from Hyderabad outsourcing, right? India, as part of a help desk outsourcing effort, should be able to do only the following things. SM50, SM66, SU01, SU53 transaction. So this will let you create that kind of a role so that you can only do these four things. We'll give you the right authorizations to be able to do that. 
then you can assign users to this role. In this case, there was one user assigned to that role called B44HDAD. And with that user, you can only do those four transactions. Anything else you do, you'll get an error message. Okay. Uh, what's the average pay for a U.S. SAP basis consultant? Um, from a salary perspective, uh, you know, it's uh, for a person, you know, who has got probably in the range of five years of experience, I would say is somewhere between 85 to 105, right? And as your experience, uh, $1,000 a year, as your experience increases, it goes higher than that, right? Um, you know, but then also it depends on, you know, how good your experience is, right? Five years of experience. I've had people with two years of experience sometimes perform better than people with five years of experience, right? U.S. market is, at least consulting market is focused on skills, right? Um, Yes, as part of the KPSO, right, in the KPSO offering. All right, so if no more questions, let's Let's break for today. Make sure you are in touch with them all. Do complete the formalities of your registration in time so that you can benefit from the DVD and get ready for next week's session. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'm stopping the recording now.